Hola, bon dia. Carl Martin here with the Good Morning Portugal show from expatsportugal.com. How are you today? It is, of course, Seixta Feira. And I've been saying dia 4 de dezembro, but uh, I've, been, um, I've been advised because our special guest today is Filomena Pascual. Let's bring her onto the screen now because we often, um, well, every time she comes, we have a fantastic conversation. You're invited to that conversation to learn all about the Portuguese language and Portuguese culture. Filomena, bom dia, como estás? Olá, bom dia, bom dia a todos. Oh, wonderful. Um, and yes, thank you for that bit of coaching already. Um, I, I, what I've been doing every morning is saying to people what the day is, what the date is. And because I think that's a really good way of learning the, the, the days of the week, obviously, and the numbers. Okay. And I was, I mean, with, with the research I'd done, I was saying, for example, for today, Seixta Feira, dia 4 de, de dezembro. You can say, I can drop the dia. I don't need to say that, do I? No, I mean, of course you can say Seixta Feira, dia 4 de dezembro, but you can just say Seixta Feira, 4 de dezembro. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Well, that's the first thing. Check. We've we we we've been sorted out, or I've been sorted out there. Um, every time Philomena comes, I learn something new. Um, or actually, if not if not to more than a few things, uh, every time Philomena's here, the ex the offer is extended to you this morning. Any of those awkward yeah. situations you found yourself in as an expat, the the phrase you need to learn, like "Can you slow down a bit, please?" that sort of thing, or what do you say after you've said "How are you?" Those sort of everyday situations, Philomena is fantastic for helping us uh, expand our knowledge and our, really our confidence as well um, with the new language and the new country. So get those questions coming in uh, to Philomena. We will be talking about uh, the weather, obviously, because it's a British person here in the presentation yeah. chair. It's a, it's a British weather today. And we brought you British weather, especially <laughs> for this occasion, Philomena. Um, and... Um, and we'll talk quickly about the weather and then we will look at Christmas um, because obviously Christmas is changed beyond the normal. Uh, but let's let's find out what a traditional Portuguese Christmas looks like so that we can prepare in the appropriate way. And then we'll, we'll factor in the um, pandemic measures as well and understand how the pandemic has impacted the Portuguese Christmas, which I think it probably has given the, the you know, the family approach and, and the big family approach in, in Portugal. But we'll find out more about that in just a moment after we've found out about depression dora like you say there uh philomena you've got the british weather outside the window this morning <laughs> um i'm not going to do my normal weather i'm going to go to the portugal resident now um because i think it's fair to say all over the country that we're experiencing rain it might be down to this uh lady dora uh, to bring rain cold massive waves and possibly snow snow to mainland portugal very christmasy after a few wonderful days of sunshine, mainland Portugal is expecting another bout of bad weather due to the arrival of Depression Dora, which will bring rain, strong gusts, colder temperatures, and possibly even snow to some parts of the country. The bad weather is expected to begin this Thursday afternoon and continue until at least Saturday, according to the Portuguese Sea and Atmos uh, Atmosphere Institute, the IPMA. Uh, rough seas are also forecast. I think it's going to be spectacular at Nazaré, especially on the western coast. Well, there is only a western coast, isn't there? Or is it? Oh, yeah, I guess you've got a little bit of a southern coast as well. Starting at the end of this afternoon, this was reported yesterday, massive waves are expected, possibly reaching altitudes between 7 and 14 metres. Wow. On Friday, all of Portugal's coastal districts will be under orange alert, except for Leria and Lisbon, which will be under red alert, the highest. Meanwhile, high altitude areas could also see some snowfall in the coming days. Philomena, first question. Where do you go to in Portugal for snow? Well, of course, um, the, the highest uh, mountain in Portugal, Serra da Estrela. Mm. Uh, Serra da Estrela is the highest mountain. And so uh, when you want to go skiing, for example, you can go skiing. Um, sometimes the snow is not enough and uh, uh, they need some machines to, to, to produce some extra snow. Really? Uh, right. Yes, but um, but in general, yes, it, it snows there. Of course, it used to snow a lot more um, some years ago. Uh, now it doesn't so much. But um, yes, it's the it's the, the skiing <laughs> resort is in Serra de Estrela. Um, but of course, we here in Serra de Lausanne, uh, we also get a little bit of snow sometimes at the top of the mountain. Not much, but sometimes it's, it does snow. 
Oh, it must be so beautiful there because you've got these schist cottages, haven't you? And you've got deer yeah. running about up in those mountains. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, de Lausanne. 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 Yeah, and uh, that must be so picturesque and beautiful up there. Yes, yes, with the snow, it, it, it's really nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. very, very beautiful. Yeah, a few good mornings this morning. Ken's here. It's, I think, day three um, in Portugal. Uh, snow in Guarda this morning. Beautiful sight mm -hmm. indeed. To, to, to greet you, Ken, on your arrival. Most people associate Portugal, of course, when they arrive uh, with blazing sun, but you've, you've got uh, snow there in Guarda. Uh, bon dia from Safaro in Porto. Good morning to you, Joel. Looking forward to your company tonight. Wake up. Oh, I should qualify that. I can't say that, can I? I'm looking forward to your company tonight to, to a man in Porto. I should qualify that. That'll be in the expat man cave. Um, mm -hmm. Wake up today and feeling that the roof of my shed was going to be blown out uh, with the wind. And I have a very wet awakening. Uh, yes, he lives in a shed in Porto. And he's got internet and a shed. Um, so hopefully you got through door okay, um, Joel. Hola, bon dia from a mixed weather morning here in the eastern Algarve. Yeah, usually the best of the weather, but I think you're still feeling it down there as well. Uh, bon dia, Calimera. Um, a, a greeting from Greece. Uh, bon fin de semana. Early with that greeting, but we'll take that uh, any time from about 8 o'clock on Friday. Um, I can't stay to view. I need to go view a property. Bosort, good luck with that, Ken. Uh, Gianni, um, one of your fans is in already. Uh, bon dia, Filomena. Ikal, I have problems with the pronunciation from Elish, Elash, Voshistain. Can you please say it? Can we go through that, please, then, <laughs> Filomena? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a good way to start. Okay. So, um um about the pronunciation of the e at the beginning it's also essential to start uh, with the, the right e <laughs> the right oh. e sound because okay. um in the masculine form ilus uh the the pronunciation is e e lus so the first the e is the sound e e lus e lus e lus and e then for the, yeah you can repeat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's very, very good. And then uh, for the female form, um, the, it's not A at the beginning. It's A. It's an open sound, A. 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 You have to open your mouth. A. Elish. Elish. Oh, this, this is fantastic. So do you get people doing that in the class? With, or, or, or yes, children? yes. I, I have I have this that kind of question in the class, yes. So... so e uh, Elish, yeah. Elish, and Elish. So the first E is essential to to see if you are saying the masculine or the feminine form. And yes. um, the same happens with other words, um, masculine and feminine. Uh, like, uh, for example, the word deal, his, deal, and then her. Del. It's the same E for the masculine and the same E for the feminine. So, del, del, his and her, and so on. It, it goes <laughs> uh, with other words, um, male and female, with this uh, E for the masculine and E, an open E for the feminine. So, you close it for the masculine form, you open the vowel for the feminine uh, form. So. Elish, Elish. I hope it helped you, Ginny. And uh, then the vocês têm. I guess the problem is not vocês. Probably it's the the the, the word têm. Um, this is also a, a double nasal sound because without the the accent, without the accent, um, it's just uh, the singular form, isn't it? Têm. It's just têm. Yeah. But tem, um, the M is there to, to give us a nasal E, right? The M is at the end, to, just to give us a nasal sound. So it's A, this A, <laughs> tem, tem. But then if you have the, the hat on, on the E, the accent, acento circunflexo, um, so e, this, this hat on the E gives us another nasal sound. So we have to produce a double nasal sound. And so it becomes tang. 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 So it's a, a double, a double nasal sound. So tang, the, the singular is tang, just one yeah. sound, tang. And then the plural is 
tayang. Of course, you, if you say it quicker, it's tayang, right? Tayang. But it's tayang. It's a double nasal sound. Tayang. Okay, Good. so I'm, I'm, I can repeat the, 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 four, the four words again. Yes, Il please. Before you, do, yes. before you do, can we yeah. make sure everybody's doing this at home and very loudly? So what I want you to do <laughs> is, is follow along at home so loudly that somebody in another room comes in and says, <laughs> what the hell is going on in here? So let's do that really yeah, nice and wake loud. Up, wake up the neighbours. <laughs> okay, yeah, so your neighbours can hear it. Let's go. Yeah, so Elush. Elish. 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 Vocês têm. Vocês têm. Perfect, Carl. Oh, Very oh, good. Very oh. good. <laughs> yes, I, I feel better for that. Um, that's that's a great question, Jenny. So more like that. Anybody ah. who's struggling with their Portuguese, let's get the comments up. Let's uh, help. Let's get uh, Philomena's help here this morning on Philomena Friday, um, because people understand this now as an institution here on Good Morning Portugal. Uh, bon dia all. Happy joy, joy. Happy, happy joy, joy. It's Philomena Friday. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and a thumbs up um, from Jenny in Belgium there. Uh, who, who, she's doing such a great effort with this because she's she's not here yet in Portugal, but she's mm -hmm. making a really serious effort to learn the language. So we're, we're, we're very impressed, Jenny, with, with yeah. your effort. Uh, Serra de Estrela is the highest point in Portugal, continental Portugal, but the highest point overall is in Madeira, in Pico. The Pico. No, not Madeira, not, not Madeira, I'm afraid. Oh. It's Açores, Açores. Oh, Açores. okay, <laughs> wow. I love it when the Portuguese people disagree with each other on the show. Um, no, Pico is not in Madeira, it's in the Azores. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, uh, action man reporting for duty. Gary, come on, you know how to say that in Portuguese, I'm sure. Uh, Will Thompson, morning, yucky weather. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not a happy bunny there over in Obidosh and in Germany this morning. Good morning, Carl, Philomena, and everyone from a cloudy and cold Wiesbaden, Germany. Rain forecast mm -hmm. for today, snow possible tomorrow. So this depression door, I think, is um, bringing some Christmassy weather all across Portugal. Yeah. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Good morning, Jim. <laughs> um, I, yes. I, I do, I've got to say I prefer the, 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 the Latin sexy sounds of Portugal o, o, over German. Maybe that's because of my, my school um, learning of German, um, which was a little bit awesome. It was traumatic. traumatic. <laughs> it, was, it was traumatic, but less, the least said about that, the better. The least said soonest mended. Okay, so yeah, we're approaching Christmas. Uh, that is in the air in Portugal, isn't it, from about mid-November? Um, yeah. And, um, could you, not, could you not not as much as in England, right? Not as much as in the UK because you guys are a bit crazy about Christmas. You start in September. <laughs> well, to be fair, Philomena, the supermarkets start in September with yeah. they were selling their crackers and whatever, so that they, you know, the marketing men never miss an opportunity, um, yeah. do they? But um, I, th to me, it seems like the Portuguese are much more serious about how they celebrate uh, Christmas. And we want your pictures, folks, actually, from all over Portugal, of these lovely presepios of the towns, how they're dressed up. Because pandemic or not, Portugal is still making a fantastic effort, right, in the towns. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the towns are getting decorated. You, you've got that massive snowman in Agada, which I heard yesterday cost 300,000 euros or something when they bought Ooh. that thing. <laughs> that's a, it's a biggest uh, sorry, it's not a stone, a biggest father christmas isn't it in in um well biggest father christmas display possibly in the world uh there in agada the place famous for the umbrellas of course the, 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 yeah. the, umbrellas. the hanging so, umbrellas yeah <laughs> so what what's how if people are new here and want to get into the spirit of the portuguese christmas how might that look um uh, you know in terms of the celebrations is it christmas what? eve more important christmas day more important do you, mm -hmm. do you give presents to everybody? Do you just do it for family? Do you give Christmas cards to everybody? You know, give us a, could you mind giving us a few cultural tips there? Yes, of course. Well, um, this year is not, of course, a, a normal Christmas uh, yeah. everywhere. And uh, so because usually we have the nice uh, presepios as the cribs, as, as, you, as you have uh, mentioned, for example, in Panela, um, I don't know if you have visited before, but uh, uh, in Panela we usually have a very beautiful uh, presepio to visit in the castle, uh, a huge one with uh, moving figures and ev everything. It's it's very nice, uh, but of course not this year, right? Not this oh, sure. year. Um, well, but but um, in general, people. I have also prepared at home 
I can send you some pictures later. Um, my 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 presepio, my small presepio at home, um, and my Christmas tree. Um, here in the office, I have uh, I don't know if you can see a little of my decoration. Oh uh, yep. Um, my my tree is a, a tree made of uh, just some piece of wood, yep. right? Some pieces of wood, and it's my tree. And um, so I have already decorated a little bit here in my office. But um, at home, I, I also have the tree and, and I have the presepio, the, the, the crib. Um, but people usually, um, they like to have a presepio and, and a Christmas tree at home. Um, and uh, um, the most important time uh, is uh, um, Christmas Eve. Oh, okay. It's dinner, dinner um, uh, on Christmas Eve, because that is the time to gather the the, the family, the you know brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and, and cousins ev everywhere. Um, so um, uh, not this year, of course, as as I said. I mean, this this year must be an exception. But um, usually people uh, get together, uh, they go to grandmother's house or, uh, you know, some, um, they meet in, in one of the houses of the family. And um, the, the most important meal is, of course, dinner uh, on Christmas Eve. And, of course, that the traditional dish is... Bacalhau. Bacalhau, of course. <laughs> Bacalhau. The salted codfish. Um, so that is the the traditional the traditional meal. Um, although there are some uh, some areas in Portugal, for example, in the north, they also like octopus, and and you know there are some variations. Let's say um, in in the different regions, but um, in general, the codfish is uh, is the king, and uh, uh, so it's. Um, Usually, the, the traditional uh, way is just boiled. So nothing special. Really? Boiled, boiled codfish, boiled potatoes, boiled cabbage. Um, so everything boiled. Um, it's very, <laughs> very, very simple. Very, very simple. Um, with lots of olive oil on top, right? Of so course. Lots of olive oil. Um, so this, this is the, the typical dish usually. And of course, there are plenty of other things, other dishes, and um, also lots of sweets because <laughs> Portuguese love sweets. So yeah. lots of desserts, um, lots of sweets, and we have the the cake that uh, uh, probably you know the bol rei. Yes, you know yes. bol rei, right? So bol rei is also a typical cake uh, for Christmas, and uh, filhos. Uh, do you know filhos? No. No. Um, they are also different in different parts of the country. Uh, here in the Coimbra region, they are round, little round eggs. Um, and, uh, for example, in Castelo Branco, they are uh, spread. They, 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 they call it filhos pichada. Filhos pichada. It's mean, it means they are spread when they, before they are fried. Um, instead of being in a round shape, they are uh, spread and then they are fried. So um, it's a fried uh, cake uh, made of pumpkin, essentially pumpkin. Um, although you can also do it with uh, carrots or, you know, but you, it, traditionally it's it's pumpkin. Wow. So, we so, with plenty of sugar on that as well, then, right? Yeah, sugar, cinnamon. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm thinking like a, a fried piece of pumpkin doesn't sound terribly appetizing. But, but in, <laughs> oh, but it, it has lots of sugar and and the ones that um, the spread, the filhos pichada, also has aguardiente. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, that makes a difference. <laughs> that, that makes a big difference. A liberal splashing of, of some yeah. fire on there. Yes. Okay. Some oh. aguardiente, so and and other other ingredients, of course, but um, they are tasty. Yes, they are tasty. And bolore, I discovered last night that bolore used to have um, a metal object in it, which yes. was surprised to find. No. But the, the EU now it's forbidden. Right? Yes, it, it's it, not. It, it, <laughs> how dare the EU tell people what they can and can't put in their cakes? But also well, a broad bean as well, right? There's a, a like a fava yes. bean in there too. What, what's yes. what's the significance of the fava bean? 
Well, if you if you were the one who would have the slice with the bean, you would pay the next cake. Quite right. <laughs> you would oh. have to pay the next one. Wow. Right. Uh, so uh, you uh, if you were, if you were lucky, you would find that little present, that metal present that the, they used to have, tiny things, you know. Uh, but um, that was, you know, everybody would look for. Uh, where is the present and where is the bin? I don't want the bin. I just want the present. <laughs> what so, fun. Um, yeah. That's fantastic. So, yeah. so expats who, who order a little bolare in a restaurant or cafe mm. shouldn't send it back if they find a broad bean in there. That's traditional. <laughs> yes. If they find the bean, don't worry. That's <laughs> it. That is the tradition. And you just have to pay the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Super. <laughs> Uh, Michelle is saying, uh, bon dia from uh, snowy Nottingham. This is much more enjoyable Portuguese lesson than my daily memorized. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Mick, uh, I have to let you know, Philomena is available for one-to-ones over Zoom. So if you do like this style uh, yes. and uh, Philomena's approach and warmth with this, um, you can yes. you can and I, listen to her. Yes, and, and I, I, I do different kinds of lessons. I mean, it depends on, because it's an individual, uh, you know, one-to-one -one, uh, lesson, some people uh, want like this to, to ask questions and uh, how do I say this? How do I say that? Others uh, prefer to learn some grammar or you know the structures and things like like that. But so um, um, it's a wide range. I can I can adapt to whatever people want to, to do. Brilliant. And your trips for Brits at gmail.com still? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Trips for Brits at gmail.com. As I was writing that, I'm going to put it on the screen so people could see. But as I was writing, I was thinking Tripash for Brits, which is a. <laughs> that, that's more of a restaurant, isn't it? Oh, we must come back to Arwen's uh, restaurant uh, cafe. Yes, Arwen. Lovely, lovely restaurant. Yes. You helped her, didn't you? So we'll come back to that that great news. Uh, we've mm -hmm. got Jim right back at you with a Guten Morgen for the meeting. <laughs> Uh, bon dia from Rashida uh, Masaneta. Bon dia a todos da Shavuza, Londres. Uh, morning, everyone, from a rainy London. Oh, yeah. I can just imagine. That, that That for me, I grew up in London, and um, rain at this time of year make, makes for a very traditional Christmas. <laughs> bon dia from Louise. I, she says, I was being taught by my 11-year-old neighbour the other day. She's a tough teacher. <laughs> But very <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> yes. Oh, fantastic. Hello from Washington State from Terry. Hi, Terry. Uh, Portugal is on my mind. Can't sleep. What time is it there, Terry? We're keeping you up with, 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 the, with our yeah. language and culture this morning. Good morning to you, though, Terry. Early hours. Uh, bon dia from Rita. Hey, I'm uh, saying bon dia, Portugal, to us. Uh, oh, a philologist. Ah, yum, yum. <laughs> that is <laughs> yes, I'm from Celebrico, but I don't like those filioges. Oh, I see. Okay, it's a funny. Yeah. Um, where you, often where you're from, you from? You you might not like the traditional dish. Maybe you had too much of it at some point. Uh, I used to make a collection of those metal uh, presents inside the mm -hmm. bolero right? until they were outlawed. Of course. What does obrind mean? Obrind is that the present? It's the present. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that is the little novelty gift in there. So maybe a pair of nail clippers or something. A, a small knife, something nice and dangerous to go in it's a, a cake. surprise present, right? The surprise present. Perfect. Okay. Oh, Jenny's back. What's uh -huh. the difference between saying oikero, oikero and oikeria, please? Another question. How is the word for the Christmas figures altogether? So that was presepio, um, which would yes. be nativity, wouldn't it, in English? Yeah, yeah. So I know that one. I know, I know. Um, I'm, I'm always proud of myself. When I can answer these. So yes, nativity, nativity scene where with the figures of of, of the um, of, of Jesus's birth in the stable that would be a presepio uh, yeah. in um, in Portuguese. But yes, uh, oikero and oikeria. What what's the difference? <clears throat> well, it's a difference between saying I want and I would like. <laughs> oh, very good. You should know that. Yes. Yeah, so uh, if you say eu quero, you're saying I want so it can be a bit a bit rude or I mean it's a bit too harsh yeah. <laughs> I want this <laughs> um, but um, if you want to be a bit more polite you should say eu queria I would like so for example eu queria um café por favor I would like a coffee please um, eu queria a conta I would like the bill etc so you can say eu quero but it's not 
in my perspective, it's not as polite if you say, I want, I want the bill, I want a coffee, please. You don't <laughs> so, want to be over like that. Yeah, so get so, that right. Folks. Good year, good year, right. You yeah. better say good year, good year. Okay, and that, so I would say to remember that it's a good career move to say, <laughs> oh, yes. it, brother, I, I want, we don't want to be coming across as rude, do we, as, as expats new in the country. So that's a really good diplomatic intervention there thank you Philomena for that one um we um we also yes uh Rita's being very helpful to yeah Prezepio there it is there's the spelling yes. uh, on the screen there mm -hmm. and yes yeah, she's uh, backing us up there I want I would like fantastic yeah. Terry Washington 1 a.m in the morning mm -hmm. however for Doreen this is the record for the person who's here up up latest or up earliest whichever way you might look at it 425 in the morning for Doreen Reyes as well there Portuguese surname that isn't it Reyes Reyes kings yeah, Reyes. Means kings yes that's a good Reyes great. means kings very regal okay so um the Brinda or Brinda is no usually it was a small statue says Joel and um, it sounds like he might have a collection as well. Like the leaded foot soldier usually was a representation of a king or a medieval soldier. How exciting to have a little collection of those. Um, <laughs> it could be from a pastelaria or from, it could be, it could vary. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So each, each uh, bakery yes. would have its own special gift, maybe signature. Yeah, they, they, they were not the same. Yes, it could, it could be different. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. And uh, Obrigada from Jenny. She's getting some good value from this. The nada. And, and look, Rashida Massaneta is helping us as well. This is fantastic. This is community learning here. So any more questions, folks? I think we'll be here for another sort of uh, 10, 10 minutes or so. So do get your questions in. Don't be embarrassed as well if your Portuguese is at a very basic level. The important thing, I think, yeah. for me, would you agree, is to make an effort. Of course, of course, and people appreciate if you make an effort. They they really like uh, when you try to to speak. Although, of course, some some people also complain that if they start to uh, try to they start to try to to speak Portuguese, and then people immediately they turn and and speak in English, right? In, yeah. in, in, uh, but um, uh, they they do appreciate, especially um, people in the village if they don't speak English at all. And so the only choice is, the, the, is speaking in Portuguese, right? <laughs> you don't have any 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 other any other option, right? Uh, and you can they, do fun. they do appreciate if you if you try. Yeah, and and you get you have an adventure, don't you? Uh, you know, you you really yeah. reach out to people. People see your vulnerability, and I think I think that goes a long way. Yeah, and you you have a lot more fun because yeah. then uh, you know you people sometimes laugh, but. It's not to make fun of you. They, they they just have fun with with your pronunciation or something like that, and they teach you. They they I'm sure they will teach you. Yeah, I'm, I, that's my experience. Yeah, I, I, when you get over that first bit of being embarrassed, um, it's it's just it's great. It's great fun. Um, never be embarrassed, says the Rashida, for speaking a broken language. It means you can speak another language. Yes, that's yes. another nice way of looking at it. Yes, of course. Um, morning, Philomena. I know I said I would only have. One eye open at 9 a.m. says Deborah Simpson. <laughs> but here I am to hound you with a sound missing you. Examples, please. What, what is yeah, this is to? this is one of my students. This is one of my students, and she's in England at the moment, Deborah. Yeah. 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 Lots of and kisses the, to you, Deborah. <laughs> and, and the a sound. What what's what's happening? Yes, there? because um there are lots of words with the E I. Yeah. And uh, Deborah uh, uh, sometimes struggles with the sound, <laughs> and the sound must be a, 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 yeah. a. Uh, like, uh, yeah, uh, like, f uh, for example, um, yesterday I had a lesson, uh, not with Deborah, but with, with some other English lady, and I said, hey, mame, hey, mame. Uh, and uh, that, that was, uh, you know, a, a word with two sounds of a. Uh, so K M M K M M, and she she has found it a, a little bit hard to to pronounce. But um, it's um, K M M means uh, I burned myself because we were speaking about uh, diseases and and um, things that can happen to you in when you go to the doctor. So um, the the phrase was um, K M M. Oh, okay. And, and but the sound the sound of A E E. E I is always the sound A. A, a. and it, is a. that also a greeting? Like A, can you? Is it the same as hi? 
Yeah, well, yes, you could say, hey, hey uh, although it's it's not, um, I wouldn't say that is a Portuguese uh, greeting, but maybe, um, I, I, I don't greet my friends like that, but maybe <laughs> maybe other people do. <laughs> well, that's good. Actually, that's another question for me there. How do you greet friends? Because, um, you know, obviously there's the Tudubai, if it's a bit more formal, Kumashdash, and I know some people think it's much more formal, and sort of old, old fashioned, and polite to say "komoish dash." What would you say to what is like "hi" or "watcher" or "a up" in Portuguese? Is it "oi"? Well, uh, "Oi" is the Brazilian way, right? Okay. Uh, the Brazilian Brazilian way is "oi." Yeah. Uh, okay. When would you say "olá"? Um, <laughs> I guess it's just "olá." "Olá." Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Good. Nothing well, I think comes to my mind now. <laughs> most of us, most of us have managed that, mastered that. Wherever our Portuguese is, all that is, is 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 one of the first things you get to grips with, and you're reminded all the time by the ice cream um, stall. Anyway, aren't all you? Right, yeah, all <laughs> right. Really, really. Um, <laughs> Gary, action man is here. I get confused with the word "foi." Can you explain? I know it's a past tense for something. So "kufoi" yeah. is a phrase, isn't it? "Foi," yeah. Uh, "Foi" means was or went. <laughs> Okay. It can be both. Uh, for example, you can say, uh, ontem foi quinta-feira, yesterday, uh, it was Thursday, so was, foi. Uh, but you can say, ele foi a Coimbra ontem, he went to Coimbra yesterday. So okay. uh, the, the, the word foi is the past tense, yes, of the verb ir, to go. And it's the same, the same word is the past tense of the verb um, to be, so uh, ser. Okay. And uh, then... So, yes, and the pronunciation is uh, oi, uh, uh, again, it's a uh, O-I together is oi, so foi, foi. Foi, okay. And the, I've heard a little phrase, que foi, does that mean? Que foi, like, yeah, que foi. What, 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 what is it or what was it? What was it, yeah, what was yeah. it, que foi. Yeah. That's a good, nice little phrase, I think, to be able to throw in. Makes yeah, it, it, it can mean, uh, uh, you know, kufoi, what happened, or what, what, do, you, what do you mean, uh, kufoi? Um, that's a question yeah. I ask myself a lot, so that's a very useful. <laughs> very, <laughs> you know, that's the, word, that's the phrase of 2020, isn't it? Kufoi. <laughs> kufoi. <laughs> okay. yeah. At the moment, it's difficult to understand the people I experienced in June with the masks. Yeah, yes, it's the yeah. Mask not helping others. It's terrible, terrible. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. For me, for me too. I mean, here in in my lessons, if uh, I usually use the visor because with the visor it's easier. If you look at the lips, you know, it's easier. Yeah. But yes. um, some people come and use the visor, but other people uh, bring the mask, and it's quite. With some people, it's quite hard to understand what they say with a mask on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Louise says, uh, when I apologize for not speaking Portuguese, people are more apologetic back for not speaking English. So sweet. <laughs> Louise, a few weeks into being in Portugal, I think it's safe to say, having a great time. Uh, Dor Dorin Reich, uh, yeah, because I have Cape Verdean and Portuguese ancestry, hence the name. Mm -hmm. But they didn't teach the children Portuguese in the US since there was a prejudice towards immigrants with accents <clears throat> and they wanted us to be Americanized. Such a shame. But I'm trying to learn now. Often the way, isn't it? My mother's Chinese and apparently, you know, she, she just felt very uncomfortable. That would have been such a good skill for me to, to speak Chinese as, as well as a little bit of Portuguese now. But yeah, I understand that with parents. They want their kids to fit in, don't they? So often the uh, native language would go missing a generation or two. Barbara is sending us a kiss. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, very kind. Virginia. Uh, uh, well, I undoubtedly have made mistakes with pronunciation after having been in Germany for over six years. Thankfully, I did speak uh, Portuguese, Azorian Portuguese, many, many years ago. So hopefully it will come back fairly quickly. That's really good to have up your sleeve there, Jim. Uh, Barbara, as well as Virginia from, from Barbara. Very interesting and a nice little thumbs up there. Uh, I consider and respect a faster a foreigner or a tourist that tries to speak the country is visiting or decides to live in than one who expects the locals uh, are the ones that should speak his language. Yeah, um, and um, I, I think most people would agree with you there. 
um Joel uh, yeah. Sapphira about that. It it really it goes a long way, doesn't it? And you know, it's it's good for us. It's it's good for the mind, isn't it, to be learning yes. rather than it's being challenging. Uh, it's yeah. always challenging. And when I visit another country, I always try at least to to learn how to say good morning, thank you. Uh, you know those basic things. Hello. Um, so I always try to to do that. And I know to know to for example, I know to say good morning in uh, uh, Turkish or in, <laughs> in uh, Polish and other, th other strange languages for me. But well, I, I, always try, I always try to... to <laughs> <laughs> I always try to, to learn at least uh, the, the very, very basics and to greet people, right, in, in their own language. I think uh, yeah. that, that's yeah. nice. Absolutely right. And especially people who speak English. Come on, you know, we are so lucky. <laughs> The least, we can do, <laughs> the least we can do is make an effort. So, um, yeah. Deborah here, I think, feels my pain. May, may have delayed it. Yeah, may yeah. have delayed it. That's what I think I say, and people still look at me like I'm an idiot when I say <laughs> this. So this is her problem with the EI sound, isn't it? So the may EI, have, yeah. Yeah, may have delayed. I'm sure that's may why. May have delayed. Even yeah, because my, you, you have may with the E-I-A, may, may, yeah. And then you have late also with the E I A late. So may yeah. may the late. May the late. That's what I say. And still, my wife takes the Mickey out of me for this. Oh, taking the Mickey. We haven't got round to Portuguese uh, idioms yet, have we? I heard one yesterday. Um, a, a great friend was telling me about um, a, a story or a letter she'd written. She said it could have made a stone cry. That sounds <laughs> like a Portuguese <laughs> idiom to me, like a Pedro yes. crying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we have, we have should add, yeah, just keep going, Deborah. You and me both with Mayor Delight. I, I like to do it really fast as well, go Medelite. Because that's what I think Portuguese people say, Medelite. But I still get that <laughs> physical look. Okay, a great question from Peter. Any tips for getting nasal sounds to be more convincing? How do you coach people <laughs> with those? Time. Well, um you you, <laughs> you try to put your 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 fingers on your nose. And uh, you have to pronounce, and do you you have to feel the sound coming through your nose, right? It's ang, 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 bong, 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 bong. Okay. Yeah. Again, this is where you have someone coming to the room saying, "Are you okay? Yeah. We're all right. We're just learning Portuguese in here." So <laughs> get your nose vibrating. So that's a really good little tip. I can feel that. I yeah. Pick it up into the hooter. Bon, you... bon, bon, bon dia. Bon dia. Bon dia. Yeah. Bon there you go. Peter. That <laughs> bon dia. You must practice that today. We want to see you walking around holding the nose and making it. Um, every, every time you say a nasal word, <laughs> you yes, can perfect. feel it. That works you for me. Okay, Deborah, I'll teach you some Geordie words. Um, <laughs> Deborah, can you put a phonetic a Geordie phrase up on there? And both, uh, and both Philomena and I will have a go at speaking Geordie. So maybe like, you know, hello, how are you? Uh, as, as, um, as Philomena said there, she likes, to, let's, pre let's present, let's, let's pretend we're on a field trip in Newcastle and we're going into the hotel restaurant for breakfast. How do we say, hello, how are you in Geordie? And both Philomena and I will practice that before the show. Bon fin semana, por long lado, en Portugal, happy bank holiday in Portugal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good call on that, Rashida, because, of course, I do need to share a bit of public service uh, with you. Uh, this is a reminder of the limitation of travel starting tonight yeah. on the 4th of December. At 11. Uh, 11 mm -hmm. o'clock. o'clock. Yeah, it goes right through to the 8th. 5 a.m. 5 a.m. on Wednesday. Yeah, all municipalities in mainland Portugal, and you cannot travel outside your municipality during this period unless yeah. you have a really good reason, like a health reason, or for uh, you know a frontline worker and those and usual exceptions. Anything else you want to add to that? Because you understand. Don't, don't don't forget that shops will be closed uh, on uh, Saturday and Sunday uh, after one o'clock. Yeah. Uh, and on Tuesday also after one o'clock, and on Monday after three o'clock, shops will be closed. Fantastic. Right? Okay. Um, so that's. That's good to know. Not fantastic. I mean, it's terrible. No, not fantastic. But... Thank you for letting us know, is what I mean to say. Um, with with the uh, wow, uh, the trick resides in closing the nose pathways when trying a nasal word. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but maybe not in a cafe. I don't know. Maybe no. yes. <laughs> uh, and maybe Joel tonight in the expat man cave, if you join us, maybe you can teach us some blokey Portuguese, some colloquial <laughs> blokey Portuguese tonight. Let's maybe try that tonight, Joel. Um, and... Uh, Yes, the sort of Portuguese your grandmother probably wouldn't like to hear, but we can maybe get away with it in the expat man cave with a few beers tonight. Uh, that is a nice attitude to learn a few phrases before you go to another country. I try also to do that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. uh, uh, preservatives is a good false. Oh, onion. preservatives. It, it, it means preservatives because oh. preservatives, preservatives in Portuguese, which is not a preservative. Okay. Oh, I see. Full you see? Is, is that what it So whatever. Oh, I see. Is that condoms he's talking about, the Ross? Yes, condoms, okay. yes. Now, okay. well, we, we say preservativo, and yeah. of course it doesn't mean preservative. Uh, in English, it's not a preservative. No, you what you could get yourself into an embarrassing situation. Uh, yeah, with I had a, I, I had a friend, an English friend, who, who, who had an embarrassing situation at the supermarket. When she went and she 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 was trying to buy a preservative and <laughs> you know, to put some food and and so uh, she asked the lady if she had some preservatives and the lady came with a box of condom and she said oh, no fantastic. no it's not that <laughs> Whoa, get away from me oh, yes. no no please oh, no that's not what I meant but it could work the other way around couldn't it if you go into a yeah. shop and say oh, can I can I have the best pre uh, preservatives preservatives and then people bring <laughs> Salt and sugar. They say, <laughs> "What? <laughs> what are you supposed to do with that?" Um, thanks for the yeah. tips, everyone. Cheers, Peter, for that. Uh, we've got. We're going to teach you a bit of Brummy and a bit of Geordie this morning before we go, Philomena, um, which is great. Um, so, if you're going to Birmingham or Newcastle anytime, well, it won't be anytime soon, but we're going to teach you how to say hello. Uh, my husband Vic says it's easier to understand in Portuguese if he has <laughs> drunk a little. Then the nasal sounds go better. I think that's true. Of most languages, but certainly Portuguese, isn't it? A couple of, um, you know, a couple of glasses yeah. of port, and it, it helps. Yeah. But yeah. probably not if you've good, got good Portuguese wine, good Portuguese wine. We have plenty of good Portuguese wine, so yeah. <laughs> you can have a go. Yeah, helps you with those inhibitions. Consider uh, as a swimming training when you're swimming, you close the. Oh, okay. So think about swimming with the nasal thing. Uh, close the nose pathways so that the water doesn't go into the lungs. <laughs> That's the trick to use for that. So pretend you're swimming. So you can be like, Bonnie. 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 Okay. Bonnie. I think we've really, we've nailed that now. Uh, Jim, I've always tried to learn at least a few basic common phrases in every country I've ever visited or lived in. Arabic was by far the hardest. I, yes. Mm -hmm. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum salam. Uh, okay. So, Philomena, you've been fantastic. Will you come back again one day? Well, yeah, whenever you want, whenever you want. <laughs> Fantastic. We're going to teach you a bit of Geordie and a bit of Brummy before we go. I started watching Peaky Blinders last night. Never seen a single episode, and this is perfect for that. So if you ever go to Birmingham, um, this is – do you want to have a go first, Philomena? <laughs> Maybe it's better you start. <laughs> Mike, I guess we – You're right, our kid. You are – Orchid? <laughs> What's that? You're right, orchid. You're right, orchid. You're our, you're our orchid. <laughs> <laughs> you Do you want to keep a toy? Do you want to keep a toy? Do you, do you know what that is? Keep a toe? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if I do it in my Queen's English first, is would would one would one care to imbibe a cup of tea? And oh in, God! In, in in Birmingham, it'd be do you want to keep a tie? Keep a tie? Yes. <laughs> okay. And now up to Newcastle. Uh, yeah, Bonnie lad, give a cup of tea, like. Can you do that one? <laughs> hey, Bonnie lad, give a cup of tea, like. Yes. Yeah, I think your Jordy has it over the over the brummy there. Thank you, Deborah. Oh, Thank you, Gary. Thank that was. You. A lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got um, we've got Deborah. Left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's glad she has embarrassed me. <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie Lass, uh, for that. A uh, super Philomena. Always great to, to hang out with you on a Friday morning for a Philomena Friday. Bon fin de semana. Bon fin de semana. Yeah, bon fin de semana. Até a próxima. Até a próxima. 
Atia Prosima, and that's our, our greeting to you all as well. Thanks for tuning in this morning. Back tonight um, with the Expat Man Cave. And uh, yeah, that bon fin semana. Try that today. And as, as Philomena is saying there, uh, embarrass yourself, make mistakes, and go, <laughs> go virtual. And, and swimming, right? Swimming yeah. and bondi, bondi. <laughs> ciao, ciao, everybody. Abrazos, Vegetas. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, Philomena. Bye. Ciao, ciao.